Hello Linux fans, time for another vlog and today we're going to discuss the XFCE desktop. Now I have no issues whatsoever with XFCE and part of this vlog is kind of to discuss really a discovery process I've been going through with XFCE and I guess my newfound appreciation for XFCE as a potential mainstay desktop. Now I've done videos in the past on the whisker menu and some of the merits of XFCE, but really and truly it's never been in my spotlight when it comes time for me to make a distro hop. You know, we're fortunate in GNU Linux to have options everywhere. We've got options in the base operating system. We've got options in desktop. We've got options in panels and widgets and on and on and on. Software, we've got a lot of great options. But therein lies kind of a problem. So a little back history since this is a vlog. Um, not long ago, two weeks ago now I guess, I installed Linux Mint 18.1 XFCE on the family computer. The install process was smooth, straightforward. And while I was setting up XFCE, going through and kind of configuring some things and, and changing the whisker menu up a bit, I really started to appreciate XFCE for its simplicity, but also for the configuration that you're able to go in and, and adjust to really fit your needs, to make it personal for you. And at first glance, you don't see all of that in XFCE. You, I guess you kind of see more of its simplicity and take it for what it is. But like I said, it's starting to get, for me at least, uh, more of the spotlight and that causes kind of a problem because you for those of you who know me uh, and follow the channel you know that I am prone to hopping from one distro and desktop to another pretty frequently now currently on my main partition I have K Revenge and I bring that up simply because uh, KDE, if I were to rank desktops, uh, my personal ranking, and, and I would love to hear, uh, and I've actually I've seen this uh, ranking before in, in another video uh, on Linux Quest where you folks ranked your desktops, but if I were to rank my desktop, favorite desktops over say the last six months or year, right now KDE would be number one. I would have probably a toss-up between GNOME or GNOME, whichever way you prefer to say it, um, and maybe Budgie. And see, that's where things get more complicated because I think also Mate might be in the number two slot. It's really a toss-up there. But for XFCE, it was always, for me personally, in the number four slot. And I guess in the back of my mind, I didn't give it enough respect. In the back of my mind, I thought, yeah, XFCE is great if you've got you know, low-spec hardware, if you've got low system resources. So that's changing. Um, I've spent some time on, like I said, on the family computer getting it set up, and now I have it loaded up on Antergos with XFCE, and I believe the latest version's 4.12, and spent some time theming and discovered something new that I wanted to share with you involving panels, and I'm sure many of you watching, uh, people who have used XFCE for a long period of time, maybe it's your mainstay desktop, you're probably going to laugh when I go through this. That's okay. Uh, have a laugh on my expense. But for me, it was like a discovery process, and it allowed me to also appreciate XFC even more. So um, I'm going to minimize my ugly mug here in just a minute and go through this panel setup uh, as part of the vlog. So a little bit of a mix there. But I want to just say to those of you who are big fans of XFCE and use it as your daily desktop, I do get it now. I get it now more than I ever did as far as your appreciation for it. But I also want to say that I'm a bit concerned when I go to the XFCE page and from what I can tell, the last version was released in February of 2015. Now there may have been you know, additional updates and things like that since then. 
But that kind of concerns me because it doesn't seem that things are being updated as often or regular as they should be. Now, maybe I'm reading things wrong. Maybe you folks know of more going on there than I do. Uh, but, so please correct me there if there are things happening in the, you know, behind the scenes that I'm just not aware of. But for the most part, it's got everything you need. I also want to touch on the Thunar file manager. Uh, so we'll touch on that in just a minute. But before we do, I want to jump into kind of my new panel discovery. And I know this is going to be like, okay, people are going to be laughing at me. You uh, veteran XFCE users will be getting a kick out of this, I'm sure. But just in case someone is new to XFC and you didn't know about this as I did, um, then then maybe it'll be helpful. Otherwise, just you other folks can laugh at me. It's okay. All right, so I'm going to minimize this. And what I want to talk about are these desktop widgets here. Well, they're actually not desktop widgets. What you see here in the upper right-hand corner, you see the clock. Um, you see here where I can log in, log out, user info, audio control, and weather. All of this to me looks like what you'd see in a widget maybe on KDE. Now I had Conky on here and that's fine, but sometimes Conky is a little difficult to um, you know, manage and configure and get it exactly the way you want it. So I was messing around with the panels, which you see here the panel is on the left, and I'll talk about this briefly. Um, as well as, you know, the theming in place and changing up the whisker menu and all of that. But I was messing around with the panels, and this was all self-discovery just by clicking through and thinking things through and trying to really dig in deeper to XFCE. And what I discovered is you can create... Now, I knew that you could create multiple panels, okay? Don't get me wrong there. I knew you could create multiple panels. But what I want to do, I'm going to go into Panel Preferences, and right now I've currently got four panels in place. So now these panels, as you see here on the left, can be configured in a multitude of ways and I'm going to step through that, but it never dawned on me. The part that I neglected to see uh, every time I used XFCE was really how customizable the panels can be to create things like you see here. Um, so I want to step through that process with you as quickly as possible. Again, this is not like a review. This is you know part of the vlog, kind of a mix, if you will. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create, and again, if uh, you XFCE veterans are familiar with this, uh, fast forward or move on or whatever because you, you'll know exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, so I'm going to create a new panel, and we'll see that over here on the left. And when you create a panel or you go in to edit a panel, you'll notice a red line around it, meaning you're in edit mode, if you will. Uh, so you've got three tabs here for options after you've created the panel. Uh, you could create horizontal, vertical, or desk bar. Desk bar is what we have here, and it allows the font or any writing or anything, text or anything like that, to show horizontally as it should so that you could read it properly. So I like that desk bar option. So you could you know you could go um, a vertical with it if you had a specific um, item that you wanted to add to it and and give it you know some some form of different look there vertically as opposed to horizontally but we're going to go with horizontal uh, we're going to skip over span monitors lock panel we don't want to lock anything now and then here we're going to choose automatically hide the panel right now never is default but we want to choose intelligent hide so we'll choose that for now. And you could also change the row size. For the purposes of recording here, I'm going to actually bump it up just so that you can see how large you could go with that. And we'll take it back down to a more manageable 30, let's go 36. Now, the size is going to vary depending on your resolution and things like that as far as how large it looks. Number of rows, we're going to keep it at 1. And then we're going to uncheck automatically increase the length. And now you can you can control, you know, if you wanted to go all the way, you could. And you could add that to the very bottom and have two panels. Or you could have one on the top and one on the bottom. Just, just an example of what you can do with that. So we're going to bump that up to about 10 uh, for now. Next we'll go to appearance here. You could choose solid color uh, and then change those colors. You could give it any type of custom color that fits your needs for your particular theming, things like that. And here you can adjust the alpha or the transparency. So we're going to take that transparency 
all the way down in this case. Next, we're going to go to items. So items, think of them as, um, well, they could be notifiers. They could be um, kind of applets, if you will, that pertain to certain groups of information, such as we have here for audio or log out or clock, things like that. Now, you can install additional items or plugins. And let me move this out of the way here. And so you'll see here kind of a list. And I don't have a tremendous number. Most of these were default on the install. For the purposes of the video, we're going to install the Power Manager plugin. So we'll click Add. Now what you're going to see here, actually, is that the one I wanted? Okay, that's not the one I wanted. So we're going to remove that. And now we're going to go up here and we're going to install the battery monitor. So we're going to add that. Now you'll see here, at first, all you see is this bar that's popped up. So we'll go ahead and click Close. And now you're going to see here what's added to this particular panel. We'll highlight that. And now you've got properties here that you can go in and adjust. So here you could change the low percentage, the critical percentage. You could even add commands here for whatever action you want to take place when you reach that level, which is that's pretty in-depth. Uh, next, we'll go to bar color. So if you wanted to change this to, let's say, uh, a bluish green or purple or whatever that is, green. There we go, dark green. Uh, how did I miss that? Anyway, we'll go to dark green. You could change that. And then next up is display. So right now we just have the bar. We want to display the label, the icon, although it's a horrendous looking icon, the display time, display power, percentage, and I'm just going to turn everything on here. Not that you're going to see everything in this particular scenario, but you, you could if you had everything set up and this thing was running on battery as opposed to being plugged in. So we'll close this out. And now what we see here is the makings of our desktop widget, if you will. Now, I'm not going to keep this. Um, to me, this doesn't look good. It's This icon's too large, and it's just not configured properly. This is just not what I would use. I'm just using this for the purposes of illustration. All right, so once you've got everything, you could right-click. You could go to Properties again and change things that you don't like. So uh, let's say we do not want the icon because it's just unattractive. Uh, maybe we do not want the bar and we want to stay with the icon. So there's your example. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back over to display. And if we've got this positioned where we want it, because you could put this anywhere. So we could have it down here. But in this case, I'm going to add it here. Uh, let's go ahead and increase that length just a little more to make it even. Okay, that's way out of sorts. Uh, 11... Let's see, 10. There we go. Um, and then once you're happy with where it's placed and everything that's on there, you can hit lock panel. And now we'll close that out. Now, you wanted to turn on Intelligent Hide or IntelliHide because when you launch into a folder um, or your web browser or any other application, you do not want these panels, and I keep wanting to call them widgets, these panels to remain on top so they will intelligently hide away now it's not perfect sometimes things don't come back as quickly as they should and then sometimes under certain operations you'll notice that they'll come to the top to the foreground and it's not until you click the main title bar that they go away so there we go so if not bad. Okay, so it's it seems to be working a little better now. Now you can st still see a slight hint, and I don't know if it'll show up on the video here that they're actually there. So, but that doesn't bother me too bad. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close this out. But that's how I have been setting up these custom-looking widgets. I'm gonna call them here, but they're actually panels. So that was cool to see. That was fun. Also, the Whisker menu, what can I say? I love it. Highly configurable. You can put the main categories that we see here from the left to the right. And again, I don't want this to be a review, but uh, that's, to me, a huge part. I think without the Whisker menu in place, uh, with their straightforward standard menu, it would just be a little too bland and probably wouldn't keep my interest. 
And then again, with the panel here being just highly configurable, as you can see from this, the, the, the last thing I really want to talk about here is Thunar. So Thunar has become, for me, my second favorite um, file manager. Now, most of you who follow Linux Quest, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Dolphin file manager. I think it's better than really anything out there on any OS. I, I truly do. Um, what I like about Thunar is its clean, simple interface but it has a good mix of, of options here in place to allow you to do the things that I like to do when I'm setting up my file manager. So, um, you know, you can adjust the size of the icons, things like that for the looks department. But then you can turn on things such as single click, adjust the um, delay before it opens, uh, set up your middle click if you have a mouse wheel or something like that, folder permissions, volume management, uh, adjust the display as far as uh, text beside icons, things like that, choose the format. Um, you've got everything you need here in place with a right click menu. Again, Dolphin's going to reign supreme there because it's going to have a lot more options, but you can create, let me go into that, you can actually create uh, custom actions. Oops, wrong one there. You can create custom actions, which is extremely nice. And I haven't gotten into that yet to set all of this up. But the more I use Thunar, the more I really, really appreciate it for what it is. And it has become my number two favorite. So you're always working with, you know, your app launcher. You're always working with your file manager um, within your desktop, whatever your given desktop is. And so if you don't like the file manager, sure, within GNU Linux, you can install another one. But it doesn't always transfer over well. There's Sometimes things can get a little wonky when you do that. So, uh, all right. Uh, so I, I want to wrap all of this up. Don't want to go too long with this vlog. But So when you combine a very nice app launcher within the Whisker menu, highly configurable, and the discovery of of newer things like using panels in ways I really never thought about before, uh, combined with my newfound appreciation for Thunar. And let's not forget the speed um, and really the ease of theming. You combine all of that, and how can you not like it? How can you not appreciate it? Um, it does concern me a little bit but that it seems like things are not being updated at a rate that you know, I'd like to see them. Uh, and there are some ideas I would have there in place as far as aesthetics. But overall, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, am I going to put this in the number one slot, you know, to overtake KDE? Probably not. But I could see that this has moved to number three or, I don't know, possibly number two for me. And, uh, hey, next week I could be talking about Cinnamon, which is in last place for me. I just, I've had issues with Cinnamon in the past. Um, I know many of you really, really love Cinnamon, and I respect that. I don't like the app launcher for Cinnamon, and I think that there are things that are definitely improving within Cinnamon. And who knows, in three weeks, three months, or whatever, I could be doing another vlog saying, wow, I've really found some things I love in cinnamon now. I don't foresee that happening, uh, but I just felt obligated to give the folks at XFCE a shout out, the people who are involved in that, to say, hey, I appreciate what you've done. I appreciate it more now than I ever did, and uh, so just kind of wanted to talk about it. So share your thoughts on XFCE. If this has helped you with the uh, panels, setting them up more like a desktop widget let me know that hey this helped you or that you you know this was new to you as well hopefully I'm not the only one that this was kind of a newfound discovery for and uh, so I hope this helps in some way uh, if if uh, only you just got a laugh out of me uh, then that's okay or a laugh at me that's okay too so all right that's it for now and we will check you later